Today we're going to continue our Firebase video series on using Firebase and Flutter. In the previous video, we talked about how to add data to your Firestore database, and we talked about how to upload and update data in your database. And today we're going to talk about how to delete a document from your database, along with any image attached to that document in your Firestore storage. This video is going to be pretty short as deleting data is pretty straightforward. So let's get started. As you can see here, we have two items in our food list. And I'm going to start on the food detail screen. So let's go to a detail for curry here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to put an option to delete this document from this screen here. So I'm going to go down to our floating action button section here. And instead of one action button, I want to put two action buttons here. And in Flutter, that's really easy to do. Floating action button takes in any widget as a parameter here. So you can see it says widget. So first I want to have a column. So let's actually just cut this out. So we have a column here, column. Okay. And then for the children, I want one of those to be a floating action button that we have now. And now I want to put the delete button. I'll just put it below this one in the column. First, I want to put some spacing between the two floating action buttons. Under here, I want to put a spaced, or sorry, a sized box. So sized box. Okay, and I want the height to be something like, let's do 20. Okay, and I'm going to copy and paste this floating action button and put it here. And I want to change the icon to delete. Let's make the color red instead of blue. So I'm going to add the background color parameter here and change it to colors dot, uh, let's do red. Let's reload. And you can see that the buttons are okay, but they're up here at the top. So I want to put that at the bottom of the screen. So instead of my column, I want to change the alignment. So I want to change the main axis alignment and it'll be main axis alignment dot end because it'll be end here. Start will be at the top end will be at the bottom. So end, let's reload. And you can see that we have our buttons here. So let's change the on pressed here. On pressed, we don't know what this will be yet. So let's get rid of this for now. So something that happens when you try to add multiple floating action buttons is that you'll get an error. So like when we try to go to a detail screen now, we'll get a crash. And if you go to the log file here, you will see an error saying that you have multiple heroes that have the same tag. So this means that these need to have different tags and it's something called a hero tag. We don't really need to know too much about that for this video, other than the fact that we need to set that hero tag field. So in your floating action button, there's something called a hero tag, and then you just name it whatever you want to. So I'm just going to say button one, button two. Okay. And then we can reload or restart. Okay. And now we don't get that crash anymore and everything looks okay. So now I want to address something that happens when we try to add a new food before, when we add a new food, we show a snack bar at the bottom when it's added and we stay on the screen. But now I want to go to the previous screen. This is just something I want to do just to make the app look a little bit more professional. So I am going to go to my food notifier and under the set current food, I want to put a, another function, add food. So add food and it's going to take in a food parameter. And then for this one, I want to insert a new food to our food list. So I'm going to get the food list and call Instead of add, I want to insert the food at the beginning of the list. So I want to say insert and you can insert at an index. So I'm going to insert at zero and then insert the food here. So add as the element at the end of the list, insert lets you insert it at any position that you want to insert it. Okay. And then I want to notify the listeners. Okay. Now let's go to the food form and I want to use that and in the on food upload it. Actually, let's spell this correctly now. So on food uploaded, on food uploaded. So in our on food uploaded, now I don't want to show a snack bar. So let's get rid of this here. And I want to get 
the instance of my food notifier. So let's copy and paste this down here. And I don't want to listen for the change here, so that's fine. And then I want to call that new um, that new function that we created. So I want to say food notifier dot add food, but we don't have our food here, so we need to pass in the food here. And now I want to navigate to the previous screen. So now I want to say navigator. And before we were using navigator dot of context, but you can also say just navigator dot pop. Either one is okay. And then you just pass in the context and that's it. Okay. And now we need to make sure that this is passed back in our API method. So let's go to the API file and on food upload it is part of the function where we are passing into our upload food and image. So that'll be this here. So let's go down here to where this is used. And we're passing it into the upload food form or upload food function here. And then we could just pass in the food. Okay. So I'm not using the food notifier here. I could just pass in the food notifier and do that here. So you can see up here, we were using the food notifier up here and doing it that way. So that's two different ways to do it. Whichever one uh, makes more sense to you for your app, you can go with that. I wanted to show you two different ways to let your app know that the food has changed or that you have new food. Okay, so let's restart and we'll see this in action really fast. So let's just create a new food. Let's uh, do food three and let's just put in some random stuff here. Uh, let's not put an image in here for now. Let's save. Oh, and I forgot to actually save the file. So let's save, restart. And let's add a new food again. So let's do food for let's just put in a random string here save and now you can see that our food was added and we popped back to the screen so that looks a lot better than what we had before one more thing i did before this video is i changed the order by sorting here so you can see it says order by created at so the newest food will always be at the top now so that's something that was not true in the last video okay so now let's get to the good stuff let's uh, add our delete function okay so here at the bottom i'm going to add a new function called delete food and I'm going to pass in a food object and I'm going to pass in a function, a callback function. So the function will be food deleted and this will be asynchronous. So let's put the async keyword in here and now I'm going to delete our image. So there's a case where our image field is not populated. So here the image field is null for these two. So I want to check if that's null first. So I want to say if food dot image is not equal to null, then we want to delete the food image. So first we need to get a reference to our storage bucket. So let's do storage reference and let's just call it storage reference equals await because it's asynchronous. And then we do Firebase storage dot instance. So we get our instance to our Firebase storage. And then there's a function called get reference from URL. So this is a reference to our URL in our storage bucket. And we get that from the image URL. So we pass in the food.image, which is a URL string. And now let's actually just print that real quick. So let's just print storage reference. And I wanna print the path to that. So I wanna say dot path to make sure that our path is correct. And now all we need to do is delete that reference. So we can do I want to say await again, storage reference dot delete. Okay, so this deletes this storage base reference. This path really isn't needed, but it's just for debugging. And now after this, I just want to print something saying that we deleted our image. So just say print, uh, let's say image deleted. And now after that, whether our image exists or not, I still want to delete the document. So let's delete the document by saying await Firestore. We get a instance to that Firestore. And then we'd say dot collection. 
and our collection is named foods. Make sure this is spelled correctly. And then do document. And then we want to pass in the ID that we have stored in our food field here. So if you remember in our food field or our food model, we are always storing our ID field. Okay. So we pass in food dot ID. Then after that, we can just say delete. So this deletes the image reference and this deletes the document itself. And then we can invoke our callback function here and say food delete it. And I want to pass back the food item like we did above. Okay. And that's it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So if you didn't have any images in your app at all, all you would need to do is have this line here and that's it. Okay. So now let's actually use our delete food method here and let's go to the detail screen and we will add that into our one pressed for our floating action button. So let's just do an arrow function here and I want to call delete food and I want to pass in our food from our, uh, notifier. So our current food, because in this screen, we're using the food from the food notifier. So food notifier, notifier dot current food. And then I want to pass in a function that we have not created yet, but underscore on food, delete it. And this will be our callback function. So let's copy this. And I want to put this up here at the top. And for this, it'll take in a food object. And then I want to pop the navigator. So, or, or pop the screen from the navigator. So let's do navigator dot pop context. So when our food is deleted from the Firestore database, I want to also delete the food from our list here. So in order to do that, we need to go to our food notifier and we need to add a way to delete food from our list here. So I'm going to add a new function and call it delete food. And I'm going to pass in the food object. And now we need a way to delete our food object from our list. So Flutter has some neat ways to actually delete uh, things from a list. So I'm going to write this first. I'm going to say food, oops, underscore food list dot remove where. So remove where is a condition where you can say remove an item where this condition is true. You can see it says test here. So that's the test condition parentheses. Let's call it underscore food. So saying that each item is a food is an underscore food object. And then we say where underscore food dot ID equals equals the food dot ID that we pass in. Okay. So this is looping through the entire list and it's checking to see that if the food in the list, the ID of the food in this list locally is equal to the food dot ID that we pass in, then we want to remove that item from the list. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple, a nice little tool in Flutter. And now I just want to notify listeners. Okay. So our food notifier here is looking pretty neat. Okay, let's go back to our detail screen now and we can call that from our food notifier. So let's do food notifier dot delete food. We pass in our food and let's import our food object. Okay, let's save, let's restart. Okay, and now let's test this out. Let's try to delete food three. You can see that we have our images here in one tab and we have our documents here in a second tab. So let's focus on the document first. Let's go to our simulator here and let's try to delete food three. You can see after it was deleted in the database here, you can see it's gone here. That it went back to the feed screen and it's no longer here. So that works great so far. So let's try to delete a food with an image. So let's go to food two and let's press delete. You can see our log is here. So if we go back to our food API, 
This is our storage reference path. So foods, images, and that matches the path in our storage bucket. And then you can see image deleted. And we went back to our feed screen. So let's look at our images in our fire store or fire storage tab here. So you can see it's still here, but we have to actually reload the screen. So let's just press this again. And I can see that our image is no longer here. So we can try it again with with the uh, food. Let's delete. And let's do it with curry. Delete. Let's press this button. And you can see our image is gone. And all of our documents are gone too. So everything looks great. Let's try to do one more thing. Let's try to add a new food and delete it. Let's do say Thai curry. Thai something add. Let's save. Actually, let's add an image first. Let's add the same image. And let's press save. And you can see our Thai curry is here in our feed. And our document is here. Make sure our fields are correct. Okay, image is here. Everything looks good. Let's go to our storage tab. Refresh. And you can see our image is here. And let's go to the detail screen and press delete. You can see it's gone. Let's refresh this. And you can see it's gone. And it's gone from our database here. So yeah, I hope this helps you out with trying to delete a document. It's really easy in Flutter. You just have to make sure that you delete the image first. So if you have an image associated with your document, I'm assuming that you put the image reference in your document somewhere. So delete the image first. And then after that, delete the actual document itself. And after that, we tell the app that we deleted the document in Firestore. So we notify the app via a notifier and we remove the list item locally from our list here. So be sure to subscribe and leave comments if you have any questions and stay tuned for more videos with Flutter and Firebase. And I will see you in the next video and happy coding. Bye.